I could have yours though. I mean, about two ferials done. Got the, the base on it, this base here had in that stash. So I put it on this area which I had in the, uh, I had this for ages, I had this in the bloody radio area on the caravan in the old place. And the cable terminated, there's some uh, gouges in the um, sheath sheathing, but the antenna itself is okay, so I'm going to have to read it out with heat shrink and make it look good. And I'll mount this up outside my test later. I did a little bit of a test on, just on my own yesterday, because it's, no one really uses CV much nowadays. So it, it should work. I got the SWR meter in there I can have a play with. But you be careful when you're um, hooking up aerials. If you make up a makeshift aerial and you connect it to sheds and things like that, like you do with a normal radio, and it can overload the um, SWR amp amplifier in there. So that's something I have to take on board. Don't want to damage those. But yeah, I got that area hooked up. I want to um, just get it as high as possible. Just see if I can get anything in any of those radios now. As for, uh, I've got this minty thing hooked up to see how it works with a battery charger. It seems to work all right. I've got the current set limited to 4 amps, 16.8 volts. So we can have ourselves a little uh, a lead acid battery hot pot soup. Just a little bit to uh, coax the little um, remaining sulfate off the plates there. It shouldn't be much on there anyway, but we'll see what it does. It's steady at 1.6 amps, this battery. Alum battery, see if they can clean things up a little bit, get it a bit higher in um, condition there. Leave it to this one, and it, before I converted this one to alum, I just converted this one to alum just yesterday. Got a bit more performance in it, but not much. I just uh, give it a bit of a good kick in the ass before I did the alum conversion. Got some more, uh, no big chunks flow out of it, but I got a lot of um, sulfur, uh, lead oxide out of it. That's because it's set for so damn long on zero volts. It's not as not as shagged as this battery is, eh? So, um... Yeah, we get some there. Good for little little things, this battery. See, good for a little LED, solar LED. LED light, I reckon that's what I use it for. Good for low, low powered stuff. This has got a bit more current in it. And that one here does too, a fair bit, actually. This one here, though, no. Unfortunately, I can't get any more better than that. Won't even hold a voltage at 12.6 volts, so it's a bit of a shame. Now, I've converted this one to alum too. I've thought, well, I don't think it's only going to sit here, sitting, uh, um, sitting and settled after a charge, and it settles down after a charge. It only tests 300, 300 to 350 cold quaker amps. It's okay, but. Not really what it should be, so before it gets any more worse, well, I'm not going to um, do much of the 30 cold crack in that battery anyway, so I decided to convert this one to alum as well. That's just uh, forming up there. So that one there can go with this one. I reckon this would be good for like running an angle fridge or something. Especially in the alum battery, it should uh, work really well. But yeah, I'm going to get my, my shed. I've looked for some steel for some iron, but found some good prices, so... Well, it's, it's all on order at the moment. The shed's going to be nice when it's done. It's going to go to about here. Be a nice sized shed. I've got all my stuff in my container. I'll then bring over later on. And I've got all the boxes. I've got to pack some stuff up because I've got all my caravan stuff on top of the bloody cupboard in there. And I've got all my motors, all my DC stuff for these. When I did my last element conversion, my old spotlights and a heavy load automotive DC bloody electronic components, which I want to keep for doing some tests and draining these batteries flat and doing some um, tests and getting these, uh, finishing off the forming of the plates for the oven, because I haven't done that yet. I need some, a good load to run overnight to drain these down and then recharge them again to cycle them. Because that's the best bit. I haven't cycled these yet to get the best results like I did with the last set of um, alum batteries I've done. But I think this has definitely got more, and that one's definitely got more power than the last uh, alum batteries I did at my old place. So, good old Bond batteries. It sucks this to be stuffed. If I can get one, it's. Um, just been retired and then reform it and get at least friggin 
half or more of its uh, ramp hours. This would be really, one of these would be really good to convert to other. But yeah, unfortunately this one is completely stuffed. I'm not going to get much more than what that is, so yeah, it's unfortunate. I would have loved to have this converted to alum if it was in really good condition to do so. I just love the uh, big chunkiness and the appearance of a big battery. And being a heavy duty, um, the heavy duty plates inside there, it'll last for bloody years as an alum battery too. That's the main advantage. Let's see, I had a 25 plate, 12 volt, 25 plate battery. I had a 50 kilo crank in it, 250 reserve capacity. Be nice to experiment with one of their size again. That's in better condition, a lot better condition to uh, do an alum conversion on. I'm sure that they do make these up to 900 and something cold cracking air, but I reckon they do make one that goes up to 1000 cold cracking air. If I get one like that and do another conversion on it, it's still in good condition. Yeah, it'd be uh, ideal. But this is just an experiment. The plates are all warped and just all up the friggin' like they were this long. And they've been crushed to fit in this bloody thing. That's how friggin' warped they are. I just charged this thing up to see if it would do anything. And to my amazement, it actually does hold over 12 volts, although not 12, over 12.6. Surprising. It was a... Uh, got the bang for its money. So this thing does fix a battery up. In this case, I totally shagged one. It did somehow get something out of it. So that, this thing's paid for itself already. This has uh, got a bit 800 coil cracking accident after it's been sitting on here. So, um... Uh, I probably won't use this to crank anything either. I got no um, trucks or anything to use it in. The, the old man's tractors that are fit in there, but um, I'll just leave it in maintenance charge. I keep an eye on it, and if it starts degrading, I'll have to convert this to them too. I won't let it go to waste either way. If I use in a vehicle somewhere, or I'll um, just convert it to them in the end, because these are good batteries. Either way, it wasn't completely dead at zero volts when I got it. Normally when the battery's like that, even if it's come good now, they people just slow them out anyway. And other mechanic shops do. If they've been over cracked, even though they're a bloody new battery, they won't charge them some places. They just throw it out and give you a new battery. Which is kind of wasteful, but when you get one of these, you can save a lot more than batteries, that's for sure. We don't have a, um, a core charge, so to speak, at some places. Some places you can take the batteries in, but you can't, you can't actually get a cash and return like it does in some places in America. It'd be nice because I could just take one of these in, take this in, take this in, and just exchange it for one like that or, or a deep cycle battery. But yeah, I don't think it works like that here because they just they, they just get greedy. They want as much um, as crap as they can get to get more money. It'd be nice if we could just swap one for the same to get in the battery at the end of the day. But no, I don't think not, not all places work like that, unfortunately. Anyway, I'm just swaffling on. So what I eventually want to do is, um, yeah, I'll just get these ready. And when my shed's done, I'll just set them up somewhere. They don't have to, they have to be in here. They'll be like somewhere behind the shed. Even out in the weather. Or what I might even do is doghouse. I might chuck the batches in here. I chuck the batteries in there, make up a little system, the batteries will stay in there. They're Allen batteries, so they generate anywhere near virtually any explosive gases at all, so they'll be safe in there. And they're out of the sun, out of the weather. What I'll do, I'll set this up, the batteries will be in there, run a little circuit board and a fuse panel to it, and they'll just, eventually they'll be my battery house, which I could just, yeah, hook up LED lights or something to the shed. Have these, and just have like, alongside a little LED 12 volt LED system. That'd be nice. I got the solar panels there, but I probably will get more eventually, especially from using more than two batteries. So they won't supply all the batteries on their own. Those two there are enough to keep this one here good, let alone keep that one and that one and that one. But eventually I get bigger solar panels. I do it um, similar to what high voltage one rules did. The LED on the roof. And just one of the, his runs off a power supply, but I want to run mine off the grid. Just to uh, experiment a little bit, 
just to be um yeah just to be cool just just for fun for giggles and for laughs because that's not the only thing i want to do with these either i want to make up another bank of 36 volt and yeah they're going to be for my zvs <laughs> Because, yeah, my PFC cap back would be here too when the shed's done. I won't be as dramatic blowing stuff up with really loud bangs, but for little things like crushing cans, it's not so bad. It's just when I'm blowing up smart meters or something. It's a bit of a boom. But, yeah, I'll probably do that when bloody... I'll just do that, just, just do normal stuff like crush cans with it and do some uh, other stuff like that with it. It's not so bad, not so loud crushing cans. That's kind of fun. In my uh, electronic can crusher. Anyway, um, it's worked out quite well. Little uh, charge has worked good. My little um, power supply. I've got some new fuses for that too. I grabbed a heap of them. I've got some a uh, couple of slow blow five amps, a couple of seven amp, and a couple of normal five amp fuses. Just for extra um, have some extra spares, and the five amp slow slow blows work brilliantly. Just what I needed. Anyway, let's not waffle on too much. Let's give a look inside this frequency counter. Because yeah, I'm gonna get my man cave set up for how I want it. It's gonna be awesome. Have a look look inside this frequency counter. This was back when I used to learn things in school, when you actually did something productive and you actually learned, you actually learned some good skills. You don't see these in schools much nowadays anymore. They seem to be focusing more on fucking just, just bullshit rather than the important stuff like your science, technology, engineering and math subjects, which are important, especially in the real world. But you've got your transformer there. Another transformer there, a bigger one, both made in Australia by Arlac. Little Australia made PCB, and everything's on there. They, um, IEC, which is a uh, Australian company, I think it's um, Industrial, Electron Industrial Equipment Control, so I think it means. Industrial Equipment and Control, Proprietary Limited. But yeah, they made stuff for educational purposes. I love their power supplies too. Because I had a, um, you have your taps for your DC, you have one of these switches to switch between taps. And you had like regulators, it's all fully regulated and everything protected. But it's not like my um, Roiding buck converter where you got all the, uh, you can get pretty much anywhere from zero to whatever the input voltage max is. The, uh, these power supplies are actually a, a nice basic linear power supply. Just switch your taps, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. volts. And you have an extra um, tap off here for AC, which went straight off a transformer. And you can make your own rectifier and everything for educational purposes. So I think what this 12 watt AC is for, let's go on to the bigger transformer. So that big transformer down there, goes to this one, separate power supply there. I've got to find out how to use it. There is some things on Google online, a manual for it, so I want to use this up to set it up for testing my tape decks. It will count the uh, yeah, frequency if, if the, the play speed's right. A good reliable one to do it instead of just using my smartphone, which is cool and all, but I want to, I like old school. Nothing beats an old school Aussie made instrument. And that speaker is supposed to be like a Geiger counter, which they're to find out how to use that mode. Uh, was it here? Geiger, see? I wonder how that works. I wonder if I can get a, um, a GM. Hmm. A Geiger Muller valve. Actually, I wonder if that's what that actually is, input on that. A Geiger Muller tube must go on there. If I find something that plugs into there, a Geiger look on eBay for a Geiger Muller um input. That'd be awesome. This would be used as a, um, a radiation detector. Now that'd be cool. Whatever it measures in there, we'll have to work to that later, but it doesn't say what Rentkins or sievents it, or anything what it would measure in, but it's just a basic, just got a basically experimenting stuff. 
pretty well made. I did see this at, as I said, as, as I said before, I did see this at a tip shop for that price. At the time, I regretted not buying it. I went again and it was gone. I was like, oh no, I missed it. And then I went, oh well. But it turns out the guy, um, yeah, that I got in contact with release, he bought this. That's awesome. But yeah, it's a pretty nicely made. I like the enclosure on that. It's all custom made stuff. Really nice. I think you can slide circuit boards in there, I think. Really nicely custom made. I wish they, um, you can at least buy these just for that you can make things into yourself. Like a J car, for example, don't sell one like that. This was just a custom made for this company. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.